All right, thanks for watching. And today we would like to prove one of the, if not the most important fact about determinants, namely that the determinant of AB is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And in this proof, I would really like you to see how beautiful linear algebra is here because we will not do any messy calculations. We'll just use our minds. And how do you do this? First of all, uh, I mean, first of all, assume A and B are n by n matrices. Otherwise, this might not be true, uh, or the AB might not even be defined. Um, and first of all, let me just try to get rid of a uh, garbage case, which is the case if A is not invertible. Case one. A is not invertible. Well, in that case, in another video, I have independently shown that this implies that the determinant of A is zero. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, if A is not invertible, this also implies that the rank of A isn't optimal. So the rank of A is strictly less than n, where n is the size of a. a is n by n here. But here's the thing. The rank under composition can only decrease. So in particular, what do we know about the rank of a, b? It's less than or equal to the rank of a. And the reason is, this is true for linear transformations, namely the rank of, let's say, ut is less than or equal to the rank of u, and this is because what is the rank? It's the dimension of the range. So it just measures how big our linear transformation is. And well, if we compose linear transformations, the output can never be bigger. And let me give you an analogy for this. So suppose you're flying planes, and A is just a set of flights that take you to London, for example. And B is just a set of flights with a layover, let's say, in Paris. Then there are many more flights that take you to London than flights that take you to London through Paris. Because if you want to go to London, you might have to go to Paris or you might not. So in general, there are more flights to London, that's A, than flights to London going through Paris. That's why the range can never get bigger, and therefore the dimension here, which is the rank, is never bigger than the original matrix. So, in particular, the rank of AB is less than or equal to the rank of A, which is strictly less than N by assumption. And in particular, AB is not an optimal matrix, so this implies that AB is not invertible. And because by the same argument that I've done in another video, if a matrix is not invertible, the determinant of AB is zero. And what I'm saying is, here, this identity is trivially satisfied. So, because, what do we get? The determinant of AB, which is zero, and that is the determinant of A, times the determinant of B. Because this is also zero. It's kind of like vacuously true, which I found out it's called vacuously true because it's true in a vacuum like where there's no air or something, which is really cool. So that was the first case, which means that this identity is true for non-invertible matrices. So from now on, assume that A is invertible. And there's a reason we need that. We need that actually for case three. So assume A is invertible. And Let's do the second case. So here's the idea. In another video, I've shown that, you know, at least an invertible matrix uh, 
can be written as a product of elementary matrices, where elementary matrices are kind of like the building blocks of matrices. So what I want to show you is, let's show that this identity is true for those building blocks. And then in case three, we can just build up the general case. So suppose A is elementary. Elementary, my dear Watson, uh, is elementary. Say of type one. And I like to remind you there are three kinds of elementary matrices. One where you interchange two rows, one where you multiply a row by a number, and one where you add a multiple of one row to the other one. So in this case, assume we're at type one, so A interchanges rows, so interchanges two rows. And just as an example, we have, uh, let's say, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. So just a matrix that interchanges two rows. And I have some very good news. We have actually done uh, most of it in a previous video about elementary row operations. Because look, if A is elementary, then what does AB do? AB just interchanges two rows of B. Just by definition of this elementary matrix. It interchanges two rows of B, and here's a fact that I've done in another video. If you interchange two rows of a matrix, the new determinant is minus the old determinant. So in particular, determinant of AB will be minus the determinant of B. Because if you interchange, it just becomes minus. That's on the one hand. On the one hand, we know that the determinant of AB is minus the determinant of B. On the other hand, and I've also done this, uh, if you take the determinant of this elementary matrix, you do get minus 1. Because, for example, here expand it along the second row, and then you get the determinant of 0, 1, 1, 0, which is minus 1. So, but also, determinant of A is minus 1. And therefore, what do we get? Determinant of AB, it's minus determinant of B, but minus is just determinant of A. So in the end, we get determinant of A times the determinant of B. In other words, if A is an elementary matrix of type 1, then this identity is satisfied. And the argument for type 2 or type 3 is exactly the same, and therefore we can assume that if A is an elementary matrix, then we are done. Alright, third case. What, if, what about the general case? General case. And remember, you know, at some point it was like, well, let's assume A is invertible. Here it's important because if A is invertible, then the main point of elementary matrices is that you can write any invertible matrix as a product of elementary matrices. So then A is of the form, let's write it, you know, from right to left, so E1, E2, Da, 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 up to EN, where EI are elementary. And let's calculate the determinant of AB. Well, look. The determinant of AB. A is EM, da, 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 E2, E1, B, which is the determinant of E m times E m minus 1, da, 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 E 2, E 1, B. But here's the thing, we have a product of two things, one of which is elementary. 
So by case one, this means it was multiplicative, it becomes a determinant of EM times a determinant of all those other things. EM minus one, dot dot dot, E2, E1, B. But here's the thing, this one is also elementary, which means you can use case one again and again and again and again until you left with the following. That's the determinant of EM, determinant of EM minus one, dot dot dot, determinant of E1, and the determinant of B. In fact, let me uh, specify also, so determinant of E2, determinant of E1, determinant of B. All right, now focus on this part. Well, look, it's kind of neat. We're using case one like crazy. Um, so again, that was also by case one. All right, now look, this is an elementary matrix. So by applying case one in reverse, we know that this is the determinant of E2, E1. The determinant of EM, Determinant of EM minus 1, dot, dot, dot. Uh, determinant of E3, determinant of E2, E1, determinant of B. And then you can continue here. E3 is an elementary matrix. So you can put all of this in terms of a determinant. So basically, by applying case one in reverse, again, and again, and again, you're left with the following, EM up to E2, E1, and the terminal of B. But what was this junk? That was just A. So we're left with the terminal of A times the terminal of B. And so, in the general case, we also have that the determinant of AB is the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And we are done. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, just notice, there are no, uh, we didn't do any messy calculations, no cofactor expansions whatsoever. We just noticed that elementary, this is true for elementary matrices, and elementary matrices are kind of like building blocks for general matrices. So from now on, just feel free to use this uh, technique whenever you want. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math and more linear algebra, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. All right, thank you.